Welcome back to the Reno Hilton and the final table of the World Poker Challenge. I'm Shauna Hyatt and here's a recap of the action so far. In Reno, on this high stakes field of dreams. Yeah, triple me up, huh? Let me try. Professional player Blair Rodman began the night by hitting a rare double. Yes. Knocking retired executive Russ Carlson and Cleveland's Mark Chappick out of the park on a single hand. Superstar Phil Ivey put a dent in young hotshot Michael Yoshino's stack. Then Phil loses his lead when newcomer Arnold Spee hits a triple. He shows him a three sex advance. And rakes in the chips. In this last stop before the WPT Championship, the bases are loaded with cash and everyone is swinging for the fences. Now back to the boys in the booth, Mike Sexton and Vince Van Patten. You know, Mike, it's a big thing if you win a World Poker Tour event. Oh, it sure is, Vince. It's a dream of every poker player, amateur or pro. Whoever wins tonight will be recognized as a WPT champion for the rest of their life. Well, that's for sure. Well, they're playing their hearts out. Let's go back to the table. We have a new chip leader here, Arnold Spee, with 1,227,000. Exact tie for second and third between Michael Yoshino and Phil Ivey with about 820 each. And Blair Rodman is the short stack with 743. And the antes and blinds have gone up to $3,000 antes, with the blinds being 15 and 30. Okay, the action's on Michael. He's picked up a whopper pair of kings in his hand. Just a monster hand. Two kings comes in for 90,000. Phil Ivey quickly getting out of the way. And now Blair Rodman also has a big hand. He's got ace queen of hearts. Well, that's a huge hand in a four-handed poker game. Professional gambler, 50 years old, lives in Vegas right now. Blair Rodman, the major decision. Well, he still has nearly 750,000 in chips. I'm all in. He's going all in. Oh, yeah. Very aggressive. Well, he's not fooling around with it. He's setting it all in. Arnold going out with king seven. Call. Well, yeah. certainly Michael's going to call it with the two kings. Blair knows he's going to have to get lucky to stay alive in this tournament. Michael has more chips than Blair. Well, this could be bye-bye time for Blair Robin. We will see the young 23-year-old with a major hand, pair of kings. Blair smiling here. Knows he has to have some help or he's going to be gone. You see the intense look on his wife, Roxy, in the crowd. Well, a huge pot here. Over a million and a half dollars in this pot. Michael Yoshina in great shape right now with the two kings to take Blair Rodman out of this tournament. Yes, we do, baby doll. Here's the flop. Flop comes 10 6 4. Oh, that's a good one for Michael Yoshino. Blair is going to have to catch an ace or two running cards to win this pot. Here's the fourth street. Going to have to come <laughs> queen, queen, or jack king. Well, there's one queen. What that means is he can now catch a queen as well as an ace to win this pot. Four. He must do so to stay alive in this tournament. Otherwise, Blair Rodman will be our fourth place finisher. <laughs> Is it an ace or a queen? Oh. It is! Wow! Unbelievable! Heartbreak for Michael Yoshino. Look at him, Vince. That is just devastation. Rubber room time for Michael Yoshino. Oh, my golly. You gotta feel the pain for this Marine Reservist, Vince. It's horrendous. That is a mortar shell hitting you right in the chest right there. Unbelievable. Running queens for Blair Rodman to win that pot. Uh, that's unbelievable. And with that pot, Blair Rodman is now the chip leader. And Vince, so far at this final table, every one of these guys sitting there have been the chip leader at one time or another. That's true. What a turnaround for poor Michael Yoshino as he sits back in his seat. He's only got about 70 some odd thousand dollars left. Can he come back? Action's going to be on Phil Ivey. Throws away 9-3. Back around to Blair Rodman now. He looks down at King 8. Got to oh. feel like he's walking across water right now. Oh, man, he is pumped up. 
He's got king eight in his hand this time. He's going to use the momentum and stick around here. Indeed he is. He's going to raise it. Makes it 100,000 to go. But right behind him, Arnold with big slick, ace king. I raise. Arnold says raise. Arnold's going to come in over the top. Michael Yoshino is just staring him down. Oh, boy. Well, it's a $300,000 re-raise here. Now, Michael's already in for the big blind. That's 30000 He's got four or five of spades, a suited connector. Now, in my view, he has a chance to quadruple up here. You know, hard to throw this hand away, I think. If indeed you want to give yourself a chance to win the tournament, you have to gamble at some point. He's going to be in the small blind the next hand if he doesn't play this one. Here's a chance he can win over a quarter of a million dollars if he wins this pot and get back in it a little bit, but still, tough to call all in with a five high. Well, he is going to call it. I like this play, Vince. Blair gets out of the way. You got the best hand, I'm sure. Yeah. Win, lose, or draw. Mathematically, it was the correct call. His opponent has ace-king, meaning that he has two live cards. He must win this pot to stay alive. Can he do it? Big money at stake. $1.7 million prize pool. Right now, the dealer sorting out the side pot that Arnold Spee is going to win. Michael can only get action on the amount of money that he had from each player. Which was seventy-four thousand apiece. That is right. Correct. So two hundred and sixty thousand in the pot. Can the young marine get lucky and make a comeback? Here comes a flop. Well, the flop is a six-three, but there's two spades out there. Michael has a flush draw and an open-end straight draw. Got a lot of outs now. So even though Arnold has flopped the top pair, Michael is actually a slight favorite mathematically to win this pot. Yeah, I'm the favorite, huh? You got more cards in the deck than I do. I I had pot outs to call. Here's the turn. Well, it's a five. That gives him more outs. Now he needs a deuce, a four, a five, a seven, or a spade. He has a lot of cards he can catch to win this give pot. Give him a face card. Can he do it? Low card. So he's got the chance. He face needs card. it badly. Will he get it? Face card is coming. A lot of outs, as we say. Can he get lucky? Oh, it's a six. Well, that's going to do it for Michael Yoshina. He flopped the big draw. Unfortunately for him, it didn't come about. And we are down to three. You know, he gets a standing ovation. Well, he should, Vince. He took a horrendous beat against Blair Rodman. Remember, if he won that pot, he was going to have two million in chips almost. Well over a million and a half in chips. Never easy, is it? He'd have been the chip leader in this tournament. As it is, he's our fourth place finisher. That's poker. And he's young, Vance. He's going to have a lot more of those in his career. Uh, very, Tell him to get used to it. Uh, very <laughs> impressive. Play. What a great young man. He's got to say goodbye. But we are down to three. Stay tuned. We're coming back with more on the World Poker Tour. We're one seat closer to a new WPT champion. More action from Reno right after this. Welcome back to the World Poker Tour. We're at the Reno Hilton for the World Poker Challenge. Let's get back to the action. Well, it's come down to the three most experienced players that started at this final table. And Vince, you'd have to suspect that Phil Ivey has an advantage over these other two guys in that he's more aggressive. He's going to pick up more blinds and antes in a three-handed game than they will. He has the most big-time experience. The best players in the world know how to change gears. Blair and Arnold, certainly capable players. It should give Phil all he can handle here. Action on Blair Rodman right now, and he has the four deuce of diamonds. That's a creative little hand. Usually when Blair takes his time, means he wants to get involved. Maybe he's not going to let Phil Ivey pick up all the blinds and Annie's. Blair firing 90,000 out there. Arnold going out with King Deuce, and now it's back to Phil. He's got Queen Jack this time. Well, he makes the call with the Queen Jack. Over $200,000 So two-way action. Four Deuce of Diamonds versus Queen Jack. Here's the flop. 
Well, the flop comes king 9-9. Nine, nine. Now, Phil Ivey has flopped a gut shot straight draw. But remember, his opponent raised before the flop. We know nothing materialized there for Blair. Let's see what Phil does here. He's not going to check here and give Blair a chance to win this pot. He's going to lead right out and bet. 100,000. Blair quickly laying down his nothing hand. Now, Vince, there's a case that by leading out in that pot, won that pot for Phil Ivey. Had he checked and Blair made a big bet, chances are Phil would have thrown that hand away. It shows you how important it is to be the initial better. They're the ones that win most of the pots in No Limit Hold'em. So aggressive play paying off for Phil Ivey. And talk about paying off. We have been paying off 22 millionaires in the three seasons on the World Poker Tour. Big money. And right now we're going after another huge prize pool. Well, you know, Vince, they say wine gets better with time. And as time has gone by on the WPT, we have seen poker get bigger and better. Our own Shauna Hyatt took a look back at the millions won and the stars that were made in season three on the World Poker Tour in tonight's Poker Corner. As we head towards the WBT World Championship, this season proved that anyone could become the next WPT millionaire. Young guns come out of nowhere to win millions. And total unknowns had their day in the sun. John Gale has captured his title. It seemed everybody and their brother was winning a WPT event. Eric Brennan's brother, Alex, jumping up and down for joy there. Even some of poker's biggest names took home their first WPT titles. Brennan has captured his title. This exciting poker action leads to next week's WPT World Championship, where all 13 title holders face the rest of the best. And with millions at stake, the question remains, will an old pro, a total unknown, or an aggressive young gun be crowned this season's WPT World Champion? Oh, oh, championship. Martin Dick is our champion. The house is rocking and rolling. Vince, what was your favorite moment of this season? My biggest thrill came when that young John Stolzman won the championship. I mean, at that age, his father there, that was exciting. Well, my favorite moment was when the poker legend himself, Doyle Brunson, captured the legends of poker at the Bicycle Casino at over 70 years old. Just fantastic uh, to see that. Absolutely. Still giving poker lessons out to everyone. But right now, back to the felt. Phil Ivey quickly going out with eight deuce into Blair Rodman. In the small blind, ace five of hearts. 110 total. He's going to make it 110,000 to go. Arnold Spee with 910 in his hand. Going to cost him 80,000 more to call. Looks like he's going to get stubborn and make this call. Well, he's in position. He's got chips. Going to try to catch a flop. So Phil Ivey gives these guys a breather. Two-way action here. Flop is Jack 10 8 with two clubs. Does not help Blair. Pretty good flop for Arnold. He's got two tens and an open end straight draw. Check. Blair's going to check the ace five. Check. But right behind him, setting a trap. Arnold slows down. He checks as wow. well. Wow. A three comes up on the turn. Pretty amazing check, I think, right there by Arnold. Going to slow play this. Let's see if that check pays him off here. See if Blair bets it. Well, Blair going for his holster here. He gave his opponent a chance to bet. Because he didn't do so, Blair is going to bet out right now on 4th Street, it looks like. He has bet beautifully. He bets 180000 Raise. Uh, there's the raise by Arnold. <laughs> and Blair has got to be sick at this moment. Arnold says raise. 400,000 Arnold's betting. That is a root canal to Blair. <laughs> okay, and just like that, Blair's got to lay that down. Well, it turned out to be a great check on the flop by Arnold there. His opponent bit. Blair let out and bet on the turn. Arnold, suspecting the two tens were good, came over the top of him for 400,000 to pick that pot up. I'm telling you this, Arnold Spee is a very tricky player. 
He's only been playing for a couple of years. He was an advertisement before this. Gave it all up for this moment, and he just showed why right there. Well, which one of these three players is going to put a WPT trophy on their mantle? We will find out when we return on the World Poker Tour. Welcome back to the World Poker Tour. What an exciting final we're watching here at the World Poker Challenge in Reno. And right now, the price of poker is going up. Antes are $5,000. Blinds have gone up to twenty-five and 50000 Right now, our chip leader, Arnold Spee, out of Thousand Oaks, California. The player Rodman, the short stack, he goes out with a nine-deuce this time. Arnold Spee has picked up two aces in the small blind. Oh, he's got the Moby Dick of all poker hands. Now you just hope that your opponent gets cute and makes some kind of play at this pot. I raise it. He is going to raise it. <laughs> and he's going to make it 120,000 to go. Into Phil Ivey now. Well, Phil Ivey's got the kind of hand you want to see a flop too. Seven, six of spade. He makes the call. So here comes the flop. Flop is 10, six, four. And Phil caught a piece of that. He's got sixes. Well, it goes check, check. Phil not going for any traps here. And eight of clubs on the turn. 150. And Arnold's going to bet it. Phil Ivey has a lot of cards. He can catch to win this pot. It's 150,000 to him. But he could win the pot if a five came up, a six, a seven, or a nine. Don't forget these are the two chip leaders going at it. Phil calls. He's Phil's, made the call. Phil shows great restraint, not raising there. He suspects a rat is in the barn here. River card coming up. River card comes to Queen of Spades. The Queen of Spades comes off at the river. Doesn't help Phil Ivy. Now let's see what Arnold does. He's going all in with it. No acting job. Pushing it all in. Well, that's a $1.1 million bet he's just made. And Arnold looked a little confident when he made that bet. Well, you know Phil Ivey's got to be thinking, this guy hadn't made a move all day long. Would he bet with a marginal hand here? He's either got a monster hand or he's got nothing. That's what Phil's thinking right now. He's got to sort out which is which. <laughs> One of the world's greatest poker players. Sort of convincing himself that he might be in front. We know otherwise. And he just continues to stare at his opponent. Arnold not really looking at him much, trying to look sort of weakish. But I can tell you, the longer Phil takes to act here, the more sure Arnold is that his two aces are good, and he's hoping Phil calls him. What's his exact? He's going to make him talk. Well, that's exactly why he's doing this. Folks, this is a ploy just to see if you can get some information out of the way. His opponent speaks, the way he stacks his chips out there. Something that may help Phil determine the strength of his hand. One million, one hundred thirty-five thousand. Look at that. Phil looks over at tournament director, Jimmy Summerfield, and says, let the man answer his question himself. You want to hear your opponent talk verbally. His voice might crack, Vince. Now, the opponent doesn't have to answer. No, he he can just stack him out there and let the tournament director answer. And obviously, that's what Arnold's chosen to do. <laughs> Poker's all about making the correct decisions. And if Phil Ivey makes the wrong decision here, he's going to be toast in this tournament. This could be, this could be, the, sick, this could be the sickest thing I've ever done. <laughs> <laughs> You'll think that if you make this call, Phil. Wow. What do you got? Arnold's going to talk back here. Well, this is a mistake on Arnold's part in my mind. I don't know about that. I might induce this call. I don't know. I think it's more likely to chase him away. You sense he wants to make the call, Vince, but he doesn't do it. No. He lays it down, and oh. wisely so. Oh, yeah. 
Here we are. Tell me what you have, I'll show it. Six. Six. Well, Arnold showed him the two aces now. I can't believe that was a good move on his part. You would just think that it would only enhance Phil's confidence knowing he made a good lay down there. Well, yeah, it's only a friendly poker game going after a few million dollars. What's the difference? You know, it's war down there in the green felt. Make no mistake about that. You get few opportunities in life to win these things. You don't want to blow it. Well, action on Blair Rodman. He is the short stack at this point. He's got 7-5 in his hand, and he's going to fold it. Blair not catching any cards right now. Arnold seemingly doing so. Picks up an ace high here, raises out of the small blind, makes it 150000 to go. Once again, the guy to beat now, Phil Ivey, but Phil's got a pretty good starting hand. King Jack offsuit. Phil taking his time here. Well, he takes his time all the time. He thinks everything out before he makes his move. Here he decides to call. Over 300000 in the pot. Here comes a flop. Jack. Nice swap for Phil Ivey. It's come Jack 9-5. But Arnold's going to swing away, even though he hit nothing on the flop. And he's going to bet 180000 Into Phil. Let's see how Phil's going to play the two Jacks. I've got two hearts on the board. Does Phil want to just call here? Take a chance on getting beaten this hand? Or is he going to make a move? I'm all in. Well, he's all in. That answered it. There's no any suck outs here. Says if you can beat this hand, my friend, good luck to you. Well, we see Arnold can't beat it. And there's no way he's going to call an all in bet here. I can't imagine with this day's high. Nope. He throws it in the muck. So Phil Ivey going to take this pot down. And with that pot, he is now our chip leader. Phil Ivey going after his first title here on the World Poker Tour. Gets a little bit closer. But Vince, if Phil Ivey doesn't win here tonight, he's going to be disappointed. He's also going to join the dubious group of John Jawanda and Scotty Wynn as five-time WPT finalists who have never captured a title. Well, this is a tremendous psychological battle between these three. Obviously, when you get down to three-handed, you've got to open up your game that much more. Phil Ivey being the master of that, he has done so. WPT title at stake. Arnold Speed looks down at an ace-10 offsuit. He's going to raise it on the button. Comes in for 150000 Phil Ivey throwing away a 9-8. Around to Blair Rodman. Now, he looks down at 6-4 of spade. He's only got about 700,000 in chips. Fumbling his glasses here. And he could fumble everything. He decides to make a move right now with a 6 high. Well, that's a creative little hand. His problem is he got the kind of hand that normally you want something to happen after the flop. Oh, He's boy. going all in with six high. And just like that, Arnold quickly throwing his hand away. Apparently he doesn't think Blair's going to be making any moves. He's certainly wrong about that. A little surprised he folded so quickly, Vince. Literally, when you have an ace high, there's no hand that you're a two-to-one underdog on unless you're up against two aces. Give Blair credit for making it happen there. He may not be catching cards. He sees you don't have to catch him to win. Just fire. We're watching the World Poker Challenge from Reno, Nevada. Stay tuned. We're coming back with more on the World Poker Tour. Reno builds itself as America's adventure place. When we were the beginning of legalized gambling in the United States, poker has really changed the way we look at table games. We get a lot of people who want to come and play poker. Oh. The players come in and they want to be a part of it. They see the logo on the wall. We have all types. Your 21-year-olds all the way to your grandmothers who are coming and playing the game. The grandmothers are better poker players because they're more conscientious and they want to win and they want to beat up all the young kids.
It's always a great event here at the Reno Hilton. That's right, Mike. And you know what? There's a lot of great poker action going on at the final table right here at the World Poker Challenge. Let's go back to the felt. Let's do it. And right now, Phil Ivey is the chip leader. Arnold Speed with about 1.3. Player Rodman, the short stack. He's picked up a monster. He's got a pair of queens. Finally, he's picked up a good hand. He's getting out raising chips, makes it 150,000 to go. Arnold quickly going out. And now Phil Ivey with a pair of sixes. I'm all in. Phil goes all in. I call. And Blair quickly calls with the oh, two yeah. queens. What a showdown. So right now, Blair Rodman in a dominating position to double up. A four to one favorite to do so. Two, four, five, six, seven, ten, seven, forty-five. You see his wife Roxy in the crowd holding her breath. If he wins this pot, he'll be the chip leader here. And in great shape to have a shot at this title. Here's the first three. Flop comes jack nine four. Not good for Phil so far. Phil must catch a six on one of the last two cards if he wants to take Blair out of here right now. Blair smiling. He knows he's in great shape to double up here. A deuce comes off. Still no help for Phil Ivey. Potential complete reversal of fortune here. Can Phil do it? Can he hit this six and knock this man out? Here's the river card. It's a queen. Blair couldn't look. It's okay, Blair. You're safe. Sit back down. Roxy jumping for joy there. Her man has done it. He has taken the lead at this final table. No miracle cards there for Phil Ivey. That's going to sting. You can't blame him for making that play. The only way he's a decisive underdog Five is if his opponent has a larger pair than the two sixes. He looks pretty devastated sitting there. Can he come back? Well, he is far from out of this thing. His opponents have about twice as many chips as he does. But if he doubles up one time, he'll be the chip leader. We just saw Blair Rodman do that exact same thing. Can Phil Ivey come back and do it? Well, if anyone can, he can take a little adversity. He's been here before. He's a great poker champion. Well, in the meantime, Arnold Speed looks down at two kings on the button. Look at these cards that are being dealt tonight. Monster hands these guys are picking up right now. And Arnold comes in for 120,000. Look at this. Phil Ivey's picked up two nines out of the small blind and goes all in. Blair quickly going out. And of course, Arnold calling. Phil Ivey's got to be saying, what is going on here? He went all in against Blair. Blair had a bigger pair than him. This time he picks up two nines and goes all in. He looks up and Arnold's got an over pair of two kings. Welcome to the house of pain, Phil Ivey. Well, he didn't get lucky against Blair. Can he get lucky against Arnold? If not, Phil Ivey is going to be out in third place. And here comes the first three. It comes Jack, 8-4. No help for Phil. Phil's going to have to catch a 9-4. Two running cars to make a straight if he wants to stay alive here. Here comes the turn. It's a 10 of spades. Well, the crowd moans because that now gives Phil Ivey an open end straight draw. He can win the pot with a seven or a queen now in addition to the nine. He needs a suck out. Will he get it? Right now, Arnold Speed pacing back and forth like an expecting father. Just hoping to fend off Phil Ivey's draw here. Can he do it? It's a 10. That's not going to do it. So Phil Ivey, one of the greatest poker players in the world, out in third place. Oh, man, Phil, very dejected, walks away. A great champion. It's not his night. He is our third place finisher. Vince, his opponents outcarded him tonight. Yeah. They caught better cards than he did. That's the reason he's out in third place, pure and simple. Well, Phil, you were definitely the crowd favorite. How did it go today? Well, um, early I just tried to take my time and make good decisions. And uh, later on in the tournament, when I got down three-handed, I was playing a little bit more uh, aggressive. 
because I was getting, I was kind of feeling out how they were playing it. You made third place. Are we going to see you at the championship? I'll be there. All right. All right. Good luck. Well, we are heads up here at Reno, but first our money presentation. Well, look out, folks. The stagecoach is coming in. Folks, we've just gone back 150 years. We're back in the wild, wild west. Oh, my, look at these cowgirls, man. With the saddlebags. Oh, my golly. She can point that gun at me anytime. Wow. I'm moving to Nevada. I'll tell you one thing. Very nice. The money's in the saddlebags. They're dumping it on the table. That's a million dollars on the table there, folks. That's what they're going to win between first and second place. Well, the Reno Hilton knows how to do it right, folks. There you have it. We're about to get down to it. Heads up play for the title. Who's going to become the World Poker Challenge champion? Stay tuned. We'll be right back to find out. Welcome back to the WPT and the biggest little poker tournament in the world. Let's get back to the action. And the stretch run about to begin between these two. The true testosterone test. Title at stake. Close to 700,000 to the winner. Opportunity knocking on the door for these two guys. As we start heads up play, Arnold Spee, our chip leader, with about 2.1 million in chips, and Blair Rodman has about 1.5 million. Blair wants to know what second place is. I just felt bad you weren't going to get the chips, and I thought the you know, Action's going to be on Arnold. He's picked up a pair of eights on the button. It's a nice hand in heads up poker. And he's going to raise it, makes it 170,000 to go. Now Blair Rodman also having a nice hand. He has ace six of diamonds. Well, Blair's going to call it. So here we go. Action on the first deal of heads up play here. Blair with the ace six of diamonds. Arnold with the two eights. That's a Picasso flop. King, king, jack. All paint. Did not help Blair, though. Check. Blair checks. Arnold quickly checks right behind him. Here comes 4th Street. It's a queen of hearts. Putting four face cards on the board. Now is Blair going to take a run at this? Well, if he does, I think Arnold's got a very difficult call to make. With just two eights. And they saw his opponent check on the flop. When three face cards came out there, so Blair going to try to make a move at this pot. But Arnold's not going anywhere. Well, without hesitation, Arnold calls him here. And Blair's not going to like that, I can tell you. Even though Blair would win this pot if it came 10, Jack, Queen, or an Ace. River card. Well, a six comes off. Now, that gives Blair two sixes. Oh, there's all kinds of potential out there. Okay. Well, Blair's going to check. Now, Arnold reaching for chips, and I don't know why. He's going to make a big bet here. 300000 And Blair's going to lay that down. Well, a peculiar bet there, I believe, because if you get called, you're going to lose the pot. You can understand if he was betting an eight high there, but when you have a pair of eights, that's a good enough hand to check it down. Well, nevertheless, you can't knock success. Arnold Spee with a shot at winning his first World Poker Tour title. Action's going to be on Blair. He looks down at King Four. He just limps in on the button, calls 25,000 more. And Arnold's got King Nine. And he says, give us a flop. <laughs> well, Arnold, not going to take any chances now with the chip lead. Flop comes Queen Ten Four. Arnold checks the gut shot straight draw. Blair's got a little piece of that, the pair of fours, and he's going to bet it. He bets 80,000. Without hesitation, Arnold calls him with the gut shot straight draw. That was an extremely fast call by Arnold. Here comes the turn card. It's a three of spades. Arnold checks. Check it. And Blair checks right behind him. No funny business there. River card coming up. The board pairs threes. Arnold's betting 150,000. Blair shaking his head. Quickly falls the winner. 
And I think Blair acted a little quickly there. Had he taken the time to think that hand out, he might have put his opponent on the straight draw. But give Arnold credit. He earned that pot by having the worst hand. That is playing poker. He's taking control right now. And the price of poker is going up. Ante's being 10,000, blinds being 40 and 80,000. Okay, action on Arnold. He looks down at a 4 3 suited connector. He's going to limp in and call on the button. And Blair with King 7 off suit. He says, give us a flop. Yeah. The flop is 973. Blair's flopped two sevens and checks, but Arnold has flopped a pair and a flush draw, and he's going for chips. Yes, he is. 200,000. He is going to put the test to Blair here. Now, Blair with middle pair has to make a decision as to what to do. I'm all in. I oh, Blair. boy, he's gone all in. Well, Arnold quickly calls him. Now, Blair thought he was beat when he got called. He's going to see he's got a good chance to win this pot. Actually, right now it's about a coin flip as to who's the favorite. If Blair wins this pot, we'll be close to even in chips again. If Arnold wins it, he'll be our champion. Oh, baby, it's okay. Baby, it's okay. Arnold needs a three, a four, or a spade. And this tournament would be over. Well, he's actually a slight favorite to win this pot right now. Well, there's a deuce. He's no longer the favorite. Will the two seven stand up? Blair's got to dodge a three, a four, or a spade. He's going to double up unless a spade, a three, or a four comes. Arnold Speed with the chance of a lifetime. Yes, Here it's it is. a four. He got it. Yes, he's done it. Well, there you have it. Arnold Spee catching a card at the river to knock Blair Rodman out. And Blair played his heart out this week, Vance. I'll say that for him. He's going to finish runner-up. Unbelievable. Arnold Spee going to pick up $638,000. The chance of a lifetime making it happen here. A very disappointed Blair Rodman. What a final this has been. Well, it came here to gamble. Okay, don't go away. We'll be right back to talk with our champion right after this. What a terrific way for a season-ending regular season event on the World Poker Tour, the World Poker Challenge at the Reno Hilton. What an exciting tournament we had here tonight. And now let's meet the World Poker Challenge champion, from Thousand Oaks, California, Arnold Spee. Arnold. You know, Arnold, we know the dream of every poker player is to win a World Poker Tour title. You said that was your goal. You've done it now. Tell us how you're feeling at this moment. Uh, I feel fantastic. There's, there's no other feeling in the world like this. Uh, you guys won't believe this when I tell you this, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you anyway. At Bellagio in December, I was sitting at a table during a tournament, and I declared at the table that I was going to win this tournament. Well, there you have it. Arnold Spee from Thousand Oaks, California. It's now time to toast our champion with Michelob Amber Bach, the official beer of the World Poker Tour. So let's hear it for our champion of the World Poker Challenge at the Reno Hilton, Arnold Spee from Thousand Oaks, California. Yeah. For Vince Van Patten, Shauna Hyatt, and everyone at the World Poker Tour, I'm Mike Sexton saying thanks for watching. And until next time, may all your cards be live and your pots be monsters.
six players. Can you believe this? Over $10 million. One night. One winner. He is alive and kicking. One player's life changed forever. Oh, Who will win the ultimate game? The World Poker Tour World Championship, Wednesday, June 29th at 8, only on the Travel Channel.